Hi there, good morning River Church. Welcome back. Today, I'm excited to share a message on Live Happy by putting our thoughts into chasing the right stuff. In other words, we have to stop chasing the wrong things before we can chase the right one. Two weeks ago, we had a very uplifting and insightful message by Brother Ken and about chasing fame and how we end up getting trapped in seeking the approval of man instead of God. He showed us that the, the desire of God to redeem us from such a trap and God seek to set us free to live a happier and more rewarding life when we seek His approval. Today, I have another thing that we all practically chase after it all the time. And this thing is not only essential for everyone, people see it as the most important thing and that is money and material stuff. The title of my message is Stop Chasing Money and Stuff. To bring the message closer to your heart and I want you to act upon it, I need you to be very honest and do a self-check as I deliver the message that God placed upon my spirit. And let me ask you, do you feel that you are rich or you are poor now? Never mind if I can't see your response online. Just leave me a chat in the, in the live chat. And those who can't do so, you can just answer it in your heart. Do you feel that you are rich or poor now? There will be some who think that you are poor. And there are some who think that you are rich. And others think that you are not rich enough and you are hoping to have more to feel richer. So my next question is, how much do you hope to earn annually to feel rich? Is it 60,000 a year or 100,000 a year or 500,000 a year or even over a million a year? Do you notice that the initial amount that you set to earn shift as you progress? And you will not settle for less because there are increasing responsibilities and wants. And there are new trends and like new lifestyles that you, um, you like. There are new trends and a new lifestyle with all kinds of attractiveness that you wish for. It becomes part of your list of things that you want to achieve to strive forward to fulfill the list. When I started to work, I set out to have a 30,000 annual income and I would feel rich. Then in my 30s, I was, I was starting to have a family and the amount I needed to feel rich was 50,000 annually. Then when I was in my 40s, the amount jumped to 80,000. The amount that I set to earn to feel rich enough keeps shifting, just like many others. There are always an increasing needs and wants to give out to our family for better education, to dine at a nicer restaurant, to drink at a nicer cafe, drive a nice car, and hopefully even change a new apartment with all the facilities and, and still have some um, enough saving for our retirement. But the reality for me is far from meeting those goals. It made me all the more admire those who have what I don't. How nice if I can own half of what they have. I feel richer and less worried about retirement. One person that I don't quite like to meet for coffee is with my finance planner. Not because she did a lousy job, but because she always painted the very fact that I am still far from my goal to have a dream retirement. It is a struggle for me to handle each time after talking to her. This means that I have to work not just harder, but very hard to earn the extra income to meet the lifestyle. There's always an underlying fear and uncertainty of lack that I have to deal with myself. If you, are a, you have a similar concern and worry, you are not alone. But do not be 
too quick to hop onto the red wheel treadmills to chase after elusive money and material stuff. Take a step back to seek God and let God speak to you and help you manage money and material stuff and let God be the one who guides you today. Brothers and sisters, I believe God wants to set you free from endless chasing of money and material stuff. He wants you to be chasing the right things and lead a happier life through His words and His promises. And God, with God, and nothing is impossible. And you can live a happier life than you thought. Hallelujah. And let's turn to the Bible in Luke chapter 12, verse 13 and 14. And dig into the Word of God to understand how God actually viewed possessions. In verse 3, someone in the crowd said to Jesus, Teacher, help my brother to divide the inheritance with me. And Jesus responded to that person. Give us an understanding of how he actually viewed human possessions. In verse 59, he said to them, Take care and be on your guard against all covetousness. For life is, does not consist in the abundance of his, of his possessions. And Jesus warned of falling into covetousness in getting possessions. If we do not be greedy, thinking that life is about riches in money and possessions. And Jesus makes it very clear that life is not measured by how much we own. Yes, we can pursue better educations and achievements with money. Having money will bring us approval, comfort, fulfillment, success, happiness. And we cannot deny that, that we all want to be rich and enjoy sh such benefits. But unfortunately, all this does not last. In Matthew chapter 6, verse 8, Jesus said in verse 8, For your father knows what you need before you ask. God is, a sovereign, God is sovereign and He knows what we need. And he also knows what is best for us. He is always at work in us, through us, to accomplish His purpose with all the good things that He pours from above. And God is not against us for being rich and having possessions. And God does not want you to live in greediness and live in endless chase after money and material stuff. God is showing us life is not measured by how much money we have in the bank, not measured by what kind of expensive car we drive, not measured by how many properties and branded stuff we own. God is not against us for being rich and blessed. He is not upset that we enjoy the good things that He gave us. He is concerned that we do that he is concerned that we do not fall into the trap that allows possession to define us and slave to the money and material stuff. People are trapped in two ways. You are rich, but very concerned about others, how others judge you. And you, re you, you, you need a nice car, wear branded stuff, and live in some high-end estate to express that to express who you are. Then another type of people, you cannot afford a car or branded stuff. You live in a poor estate and then you feel you are like nobody and feeling, feeling inferior. Hence, you have to pursue riches and to make sacrifices to be rich. And Satan has succeeded in trapping and luring them into the endless chasing. They have hopped onto the red mill trap mill chasing endlessly. As children of God, they have missed out on the power of salvation that Jesus Christ accomplished on the cross for them and to have that have set them free from sin and from slavery. Just as Satan tried to tempt Jesus to seek after fame, pleasure, riches, when Jesus came out from his fasting in the wilderness, and Jesus did not fall into the temptation of Satan as he knows very well of his calling and his identity is in the Father. He stands firm in his calling to fulfill the work on the cross to save us. Are you also chasing riches 
earnestly today decide for yourself to stop and lay them uh, lay them down before God in Matthew chapter 6 verse 33 Jesus said but first and most importantly seek aim at and strive after his kingdom and his righteousness that means his ways of doing things and the way and being right having the attitudes and the character of God and all these things will be given to you also by obeying the word of God you will not fall into the pleasure of the world the second reason that you have to take care and be on your guard against all covetousness is in 1 Timothy chapter 6 verse 9 and to 10 but those who desire to be rich fall into temptation into a snare into many senseless and harmful desire that plucks people into ruin and destruction for the love of money is the roots of all kinds of evil it is through this craving that some have wandered away from the faith and pierced themselves with many pangs like I shared earlier Satan is all out to tempt all of us as he tempted Jesus but Jesus didn't fall into the, the, the snare he stays on course to complete his calling he gave up everything and even his life for us on the cross unlike us we struggle daily we want wealth and when we have it we struggle also we don't know how to manage wealth we gradually fall away from God with what money can buy us we barely stay on course with God we have so much to do but we get too distracted and too busy for him I can recount my own experience when God finally answered my prayer by blessing me with a new job that I hoped for I was so drawn to go all out for it and hoped to get to get promoted and draw a higher salary I was willing to give up my family time on a weekend for the weekend break and skip Sunday service and the Bible study group and even stop serving him occasionally I forget that God blessed me that so that I can be a blessing to his church and his people and too often we notice that many people give up serving God and stop giving time energy and money to the ministry once they get busier chasing their dream having wealth can affect us in both ways I can use wealth wisely and give generously for the work of God and manage wealth faithfully and at the end of the day we gain the praises and rewards from God or I can or I can lose in my wealth and spend unwisely selfishly and going after ungodly stuff like alcohol drugs parties and spending lavishly without constraint on what I deem good and 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 after all it's my wealth and in the end I all I get is pain and regrets for making unwise decisions with my wealth worst of all when I die I cannot even keep any wealth for myself and Jesus showed us a parable of a rich man in Luke chapter 12 verse 16 to 19 and he told them a parable saying them the land of a rich man produced plentifully and he thought to himself what shall I do I have nowhere to store my crop and I and he said I will do this I will I will um, tear down my barn and build a larger one and there I will store all my grains and goods and I will say to my soul so you have such ample goods laid up for many years relax eat drink and marry but God said to him you fool you will die this very night then who will get everything you work for in verse 21 yes a person is a fool to store up earthly wealth but not have a rich relationship with God have you encountered and admired such rich people in real life we think such people are successful we think he is so fortunate to be so rich 
and that all he is concerned about is how and where to use his wealth. For him, for he needs not he need not worry about um, about a budgeting and how much to save for his retirement. I think we all want to be rich and have money coming fast to meet the needs. Who doesn't want to be someone rich? But think again and see how God's reactions towards a rich person. God called him fool, stupid, to store up earthly wealth. Note this, but not, but not have a rich relationship with God. The person have, have, hasn't got a rich relationship with God. God is not upset that he is wealthy. He is also not upset that he plans and manages his wealth. He's upset that the man's heart is not rich in the things towards God. Church, be careful that life is not measured by how much we own. We definitely do not allow possession to define who we are, but we need to ensure that our heart is rich in the things towards God. What are the practical ways to do to be rich in the things towards God? First, be humble before the giver, God. In the earlier passage, the rich man was proud of what he had, and he placed his trust in them. He thought the blessing were all for him. He said, my crops, my barns, my goods, my soul, everything was about him, and nothing was about God. It was proved in the end that nothing was his, even his own soul was subjected to God. He didn't have any crops, any barns, any goods, and his soul was died, was dead. In 1 Timothy chapter 6, verse 17, Paul wrote to Timothy to teach those who are rich in the world, in this world, not to be proud and not to trust in their money, which is so unreliable. Their trust should be in God. Not rich, not who, who richly, God who richly gives us all we need for our enjoyment. All things that we have now come from above, and we should be humble and grateful to the giver. Church, that is why we always give thanks to Him, even with the little things like a cup of water to quench our thirst to a cup of bubble iced tea, for example. Deuteronomy chapter 8 verse 18 rem reminds us that, Remember, God, the Lord your God, it, He is the one who gives you the power to be successful. Therefore, do not be proud and always express our gratitude to Him. To be rich in the things towards God, you have to pour to put your trust in God. And so why do we hop onto a rat, um, a rat wheel, a treadmill, to chase endlessly after money and material stuff as if God does not provide for us? Why do we keep worrying when God says He feed the birds in the sky and how much more He take care of us and provide for us since, since we are far more valuable to Him than any birds? This quoted from Luke chapter 12, verse 24. Because we, f we feel like are not having enough, we compare ourselves with others and we fear of losing out. We are accustomed to the pace of getting things fast and we have no patience to wait upon God. And we have little on, or no faith, lost faith in God. You don't see how God can take care of us. Jesus, in, Jesus continued at Luke chapter 12, verse 27, to demonstrate how much He who cared for us in comparison with the ladies in the field. Why do we have little faith, so little faith, and can't you put our trust in Him rather than chasing endlessly for things? And 1 Timothy chapter 6, 17 says that our trust, our trust, should be in God, for He richly gives us all we need for our enjoyment. In other words, 
He does not withhold what we need so that we can enjoy it. Church, would you let these verses sink into your spirit and each time when you struggle, trust Him. Go back to this verse in 1 Timothy chapter 6, 17. God wants to set many of you free through this word and He will richly bless you with the good things more than you can ever ask. However, it is inevitable that we will also struggle, but all the more, we need to stand firm in the Word of God and be led by His Spirit. And in your standing firm in the Word of God, He taught us to be, be a blessing to others. And it's how we got our heart. Paul in 1 Timothy chapter 18, uh, verse, uh, sorry, 1 Timothy chapter 6, verse 18 to 19, instructed um, Timothy to tell them to use their money to do good. They should be rich in good works and generous to those in need, always being ready to share with others. In verse 19, do, by doing this, they will be storing up their treasure as good foundation for the future so that they may experience true life. This act of giving and doing good with our possession will guard our heart against chasing money and material stuff and lead us to trust in God and set us free from the entitlement mentality that to have all the blessing to ourselves. In Luke chapter 12, verse 3, sell the possession and give to those in need. And this will store up treasure for you in heaven, and the purse of heaven, <coughs> purses of heaven, <coughs> sorry, when the, the purses of heaven never gets old or develop holes. The treasure will be safe, no thief can steal, and no moth will destroy it. Earlier we talked about <coughs> rich man, <coughs> sorry. <clears throat> Earlier we talked about the rich man in the parable. He is not rich in the things of God because he thinks that all he has is his and he has all the entitlement to use it on himself and sadly he is wrong and all that he thinks he has is completely taken from him when he died and he brings nothing along with him. Would you put your treasure on earth, in your bank account, in your stock market, and in your businesses that will not last? Or will God in heaven be a blessing given generously to the work of God, meet the, the needs of the, the poor, where things will last forever and no one can steal it and no one can, that, that will not rot? and will last forever. First of all, for whatever your treasure is, there the desire of your heart will be. So church, you have to decide today where you want to place your heart. To trust and to obey Him, I pray for you that you in your struggle to make a decision each day and the Spirit of God will remind you of His Word. The Spirit of God will lead you to surrender and make the right decision. And you will seek His word and acknowledge that He is the giver of all good things. And you will humble yourself with a grateful heart by expressing your great gratitude in giving generously and meeting the needs of the poor. By doing so, you are storing up treasure in heaven. Where the treasure you store will be everlasting. Church, I would like to pray with you. Let's bow for a while. Let's pray. Dear Lord, we thank you that you are so caring and giving. We acknowledge that all good things come from you to meet our needs and to serve your purpose. Thank you that you never withhold a blessing from us to enjoy. Help us today to stop 
the endless chase after money and stuff. Help us to recognize that you are a giver. You give us the abilities to be successful. So humble us and teach us to be grateful for the little things and lead our hearts to trust you, to be patient and wait upon you. Cast out all the fears of lack, of being poor, turn it into faith and open now our spiritual eyes to see that we are rich in you. We pray in the mighty name of Jesus and, and all God's people says, Amen. Hallelujah. And I want to extend this love of God and blessing to those of you who have not received Jesus as your Lord and Savior. Maybe today you are wondering if God does care about you. For you have many struggles in your current situation and you doubt about God's are real or not. I can assure you today with the River family, God is real. And not only that He cares for you, God is serious to give you a better life and you can get off that red wheel treadmills and He, for, for He has given up His one and only Son, Jesus Christ, to die on the cross for you and for me so that His blood cleanses us from our sin and, uh, and remove us so that we can step away from the red race of the world. He wants to set you free. He he is he is more he have raised <coughs> and Jesus raised and God raised Jesus by the resurrection power on the third day to give us victory over death and sin and to give us eternal life. Today, you can have this victory and eternal life. And would you follow me in this prayer to invite Jesus into your heart? Let's pray. Dear Lord, I thank you for your love and the sacrifice of your Son, Jesus Christ. Today, I want to give my life to you. I want to receive you into my heart. And I confess that I have sinned against you by not believing in you and having so, much, so many doubts about you. And this very moment, I take a step of faith to believe that you have sent Jesus to die for my sin and give, gave me eternal life over death. And today I am yours and you are my Lord. Please. Teach me with your words and give me the strength to overcome all the temptation of this world and stop me from the endless chasing after things but turn to you for all things and, and lead a happier life. And in Jesus' name I pray. Amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Praise God. Hallelujah. Well, the family of God welcome you to be part of this big family we pray that you will continue to join us every sunday online and we would also invite you to be part of our life tribes to learn the word of god and grow as a believer our our tribes meet every week online and you can check us out on from the the will the <coughs> and you can chat us <coughs> And you can check us out from the website below and do leave your contact via email and let us know how we can be a blessing and pray together with you. We are looking forward to hear from you. Alright church, let's hand this time over to our worship leader and continue to praise God with another song. I'll see you next week. Bye.